Thank you, Lord. May I have your seats. What a wonderful service. Jesus. Don't you appreciate Brother Chris? Amen. Hallelujah. When you're singing from your heart, you're not making anything up, you know? It's not a put up. Because when you're trying to make something up, it's not genuine. There's nothing God loves more than a genuine heart. Amen? Amen? Amen. Once again, I greet all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's truly an honor to be here with you. Um, just a quick testimony, because truly this day would have been a day of just testimony. We just testify to what the Lord has done. Um, you know, sometimes when you're trying to do something, you always have that mind that tells you, are you sure you want to do this, you know? Um, despite how busy we are in life, I've always thought, I'm always scared of, you know, the ministry, you know, because it comes with a lot of responsibility, you know? And the prophet said this when you're running away from something, yes. and that's when you know that the Lord wants you to do it, you know? Yes, sir. Um, when the Lord put in my heart to speak to West Orange, Evening Light, and brother here is probably was there or he heard. Um, it was it was it was tough. It was it was a burden in my heart because it was not easy to just separate from the brothers I've been preaching for for almost ten years, you know. Um, but the Lord wanted us to do more. Amen. 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 And the evidence that the Lord wants us to do more, you can see. First, when I left there, I said, okay, I went to a place, I believe in Lodi, in Lodi. I find a place in Lodi, and um, I spoke to the landlord. I remember coming from New York to meet the landlord. I have to meet him by six o'clock, and I was driving in the heavy traffic. It took me four hours, and he was there waiting for me in a real estate agent office. I got there almost 10 p.m. The man was waiting. And so when I got there, I said, well, it must be the place because you waited for hours, you know? And um, everything was great, except the city said no. I said, okay. That's when I said, Lord, I don't know what else to do now. What am I supposed to do? And the Lord said, well, there is a hotel that a, a, a brother from Canada came um, because his wife, God bless you, his wife was having a graduation ceremony. So he has a, a friend that I know. I don't even know this particular person, but he knew somebody that I knew. <laughs> it's, it's like a connection. He knew somebody that I knew. This person I knew from Texas was my high school mate. And I have not seen this my high school mate for more than 40 years. And I had gone to Texas in January for a funeral where I preached the funeral in the evening service for the funeral. And there I saw the man. I see, and he knew me. It's like, but Paul, I said, I haven't seen you for 40 years. So we got connected. And somehow he was coming to New Jersey because this is friend was having this graduation. Then he calls me at the airport and said, I'm at Newark Airport. Do you live too far? And he's going to be at Highbrook Heights Hotel. Do you live too far from there? I'm like, no, I live just 10 minutes away. So I end up going to Highbrook High Hotel to meet him. So when I met him there, then his friend who was having a graduation with his wife um, said to me, I said to him, well, I'm here to pick up my friend. I want to bring him home for, for dinner. He said, no, I'll come along. I said, but you have all the guests, because they have like three hotel rooms. They were doing a party at the same place we used to hold service. So he came to my house. We had a wonderful dinner, and we kind of begin a good friendship. But then the next day was the graduation. We came to the graduation. That hall where we had service was packed. as more than, more than something people there. And from nowhere, they say, well, we want Brother Paul 
to come and pray and say a few words for the, everyone there. I said, okay. So I stood out and I took the microphone and I said a few words and I prayed for everyone. And the man came to me and said to me, God bless you. This was wonderful. I said, well, God bless you. So that's how I knew the hotel was there. So when I'm looking for a place, the Lord said, why not call that hotel that you went and prayed for people there? Maybe they'll give it to you. I was at work. I pick up the phone. I don't know who to call. I just Google the hotel phone number and I called and left a message. Somebody calls me back. Till today, I haven't met the lady that gave me that place till today. I don't know her. Her and I never saw in place. I never saw her face. We just spoke on the phone and she said to me, you know, I'm going to give you the best deal we ever had. I said, please, I need it. So she ended up giving me that place for $200 a week. Every Sunday we go there, it was $200. Now, for you to compare the price, I looked around the hotel here in Tinek, they were charging me $1,000. They said $1,000 for a service. I said, well, somebody just gave me $200. You know? And we went there, and you that have been there saw the place. It was wonderful. We could feed 85 people there for $200 a service. Till today, I never met the lady. And so we continued there by his grace, and then they said to us, well, they had something going on a few weeks ago. I said, okay, maybe it's time to look for something again. But I have been looking for a place. Almost, you can ask my family. Every Sunday, every Saturday, I'm driving around the whole Bogan County. I drive down to Tinek. I go to Englewood. On Tinek Road, I find a place but I guess now was here. I brought him. We met the landlord, but the place we could not use. I've been driving around, and you know what? I tell you something. When you're trying to do something for God, mm. when you say you're tired, mm. you just give up. That's when He will take over. Amen. 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 Yes. I say, Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired of driving around. We just have service in my house. That's all. That's okay, Lord. If that's all I want, that's fine with me. I said, all I know is that as long as we have a microphone, we have three seats, we put the word. That's all I need. And then I looked on MLN, uh, a multiple listing, and then I saw this place and three other places around there. I walked, I, go, I went around the whole place, but here, I didn't want to come here. Because when I saw it, I saw the agent, I said, oh, he's not going to give it to me. I said, they won't give it to me. <clears throat> no? Because there are churches all around here I've been to. And they didn't want to talk. So they won't to me. And this is the only place I said I'm not going to call. And so when I was tired and I have nothing else to do, the voice said, Why not call that? Call that agent you saw. Call him. His name is Ken. Call him. I called and he answered. And I told him, I want to see the place. He said, No, I don't have time. I'm busy. I said, I know you're busy, but any day you want me to. He said, Well, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I said, Okay. That same for the day, he called me there and evening. He said, do you have time now? Right at 6 p.m. I said, I'll be there. I live down the street. I came here. This place, you couldn't even, it was packed. There was a man here that fixes uh, uh, one musical in the instrument. What was that? Saxophone. Saxophone. He fixes saxophone. This whole place was packed with saxophone from here until down to that room over there. You just have to walk in. That's what I did. And I said, okay. So I looked at it. I don't know how it's going to look after the saxophone is gone. Mm -hmm. But the man said, you know, if you're interested, we'll talk to the landlord. I said, please, I'm interested. You know. So he spoke to the landlord, and the landlord said, you want to meet me? So I came and met the landlord, and the landlord said, okay, you know, let's see. This is like uh, three months ago. And I kept waiting, I kept waiting, I kept waiting. And I said, oh, maybe you will not walk. And every now and then I called, it, I called Ken. Ken was, oh, somebody else just came, but we are, we are holding it for you. Don't worry, don't worry. It's okay. And finally, he called me on Saturday. This Saturday. He said, can you come in and sign the lease like 11 o'clock? I said, yeah, I'm coming right away. <laughs> I came Saturday here. Yesterday, I signed the lease yesterday. And today is Sunday, and here we are. Amen? Amen. Now, after I signed the lease now, I noticed I need to change a couple of things. I need to change the curtain there. I ran to Home Depot. I was at Home Depot trying to get a curtain, and my phone rang. And it was Brother Pedro. God bless you, Brother Pedro. God bless you, my son. Brother Pedro and I have not spoken since he came to my house like a 
month ago, two months ago, that he came with his wife. You know, friends, there are something unique about this fellowship. But I will let everyone see themselves. Yeah. In this fellowship, we have something for everyone. No one is excluded. Amen. Wonderful. And that's how the body of Christ is. Mm. In this fellowship, you just come as you are. Mm. And I'm going to tell you there's something there for you. Amen. Because this fellowship is not about me. Praise. In the message communion, the prophet preached. In that message, mm. he said this. He said that communion is not when you come to take the bread and the wine. True. No. Amen. No. He said, that's not communion. He said, communion is when you come to talk to Jesus Christ. Amen. And then he said, when you come to talk to Jesus Christ, the prophet says, it's not one directional speak. He said, you speak and he will speak back to you. He also said that communion, to commune with Christ is not when you're listening to the tape. I know some people won't like this one. <laughs> That's the word of the prophet. Listen to the message. That's the final message he preached. He said that in communion, I have to talk to you, you have to talk to me. He said, he said, if you just listen to a tape, a tape cannot you cannot talk back. That's what the prophet said. In the message, communion, the last message he preached, it's not Brother Paul saying this. But he said that Jesus said, when you come together. When you take the bread and wine, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. He said that's remembrance. That's not communion. Amen. That's remembrance. Amen. The communion is that you're here and I can talk to you and you can talk to me. He said it's not about the pulpit. It's not about one person picking the microphone and talking for five hours. Mm. That's why you have to come testify it. You see, when the Spirit of the Lord leads us to do certain things, then later you find where the truth came from. But at Chris and I were talking about this the other day. I said, I want everybody that comes to fellowship to testify. Come to speak. That's the word of the prophet. Listen to the message. It's not my word. Why did he say that? That was the final message he preached before he died. God opened his eyes to truly see what is communion. Communion is not a church. It's not a building. It's not a tape. It is you and I talking about Jesus Christ and waiting for Jesus to talk back to us. Amen. Amen. And then he said that the mistake we make the most sometimes when you come to pray, the prophet said, we just hurry up and we say what we want to say and we're done. Mm. You never wait for Christ to talk back to you. So you don't just come and say whatever you want to say. Amen. You, you go home. He said you observe some moment of silence. Amen. You remain quiet after your prayer Amen. so he can talk back to you. Amen. A moment of silence between you and him. This is the word of the prophet. Amen. So this man, Pedro, calls me and says, Brother Paul, I'm off today. Brother, when was the last time you had Saturday off? Long time ago. Long time ago. He walks every Saturday and Sunday. Every Saturday. And he said, oh, I just had Saturday off today. I said, okay, okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm like in a hurry because I'm trying to do something. I'm like trying to hang up. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll talk later. He said, no, um, I kind of want to visit you. I said, today? How? Oh, I'm running around. I'm trying to buy things. I'm moving to a little place of fellowship we have. He said, oh, I I'll visit you anyhow. Can I come by 3 o'clock? That was his question. I said, he wants to come. I said, okay, come. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what was waiting for me. Because when I came here, the landlord and the agent was here with me. They said, it's only three screws holding this thread. You just take the three screws and slide it. And you can put whatever you want inside. I said, sure, sure. Then we came, there were more than 200 screws holding this thing. And we, and when our drill is not working. I had to go buy a drill from Home Depot yesterday. I have to go buy beans from just yesterday, everything yesterday. And, and this man, Brother Pedro, was here until 10 p.m. Wow. He left here 10 p.m. Brother, God bless you. Amen. And I say, you know, 
God has everything prepared. Wonderful. Amen. And that's how you know that God is working. Amen. From the place he gave us, yes. I thank him, to the fellowship we now have. Yes. Brother Sean, how I got to meet Brother Sean? Wonderful. It is Brother Chris that went to eat at Brother Sean's house and then told him about this crazy man in New York called Brother Paul. And we got on the phone. And you know how they say it's love at first sight? That's what it is. It was love at first sight. Right on the phone, we are talking like we know each other. And when you, I was picking up a brother from, from the airport, a brother that preached for us that day, he was with me and he, he and I were on the phone. He said, who is this person you are talking to? I said, you see him later. Because we talk like we have been knowing each other for years. I haven't seen him. My Lord. Mm. Oh, you see what I guess now, how we got to meet, brother? Amen. There's something unique about us. Amen. I want you to know it. It's fellowship. This is not a place you just put your name on the church and you walk away. Amen. No. No. We, 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 we must care for one another. Amen. I believe that's part of fellowship. You must have my body. I must have your body. That's right. Everything that concerns you. It's not about just come and I'll pick up the scripture and read through scripture and i say bye. No. Everything that concerns you concerns me. Amen. Amen. If you're happy, I must be happy. Amen. If you're suffering, I have to be suffering. Amen. And among all of us, we are just the same. Amen. Amen. None is greater than the other. We are in communion here. Yes, this is what we are called for. Yes. Which you know the church age is over. Amen. And when we say the church age is over, we mean what we say. Amen. Because Amen. that's what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. Hey, praise God. This is not a time to start to build some big church. No. Yes. It's a time of communion. Amen. It's a time to get serious. Amen. It's a, it's a time of relationship. Amen. You know something? When, when, when you, when the, the older people here, when you get married, you know, the, you know that, and it's time to, you know, produce, you know, it's, it's not a joke now. Right? But when you're just talking to the woman on the phone and, you know, everything is fluffy. But when you, she comes in now, and you start thinking about having a child, you know? It's a serious time. Because you know, having a child comes with a responsibility. Amen? So the same thing that we are in now, the church age that we're living in now, it's time to produce a seed. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's the seed producing time. Amen. So it's no time to play games anymore. That's right. It's not time to sing some glory to some man. No matter who the man is. That's right. No matter who the man is, right. let every man's Amen. word be a lie. Amen. Let his word be true. Amen. 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 Yes, Amen. Amen. That's right. We are not here to worship a man. Amen. We don't worship William Abraham. Amen. No. Amen. Amen. We receive the message Come on now. that's given to us. Amen. Amen. The message is the word. Amen. And we shall see that without the word, you can do nothing. Amen. The word, but nothing but the word. That's right. There's nothing you can put between the word and the word is Jesus Christ. Amen. The word is not a prophet. Come on now. The word is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. There's Amen. not two words. There's one word. Amen. There's one baptism. There's one faith. Amen. There's one faith. Yes, sir. We don't have two. We have one. Amen. People are so confused this day My Lord. that they even say there are two baptisms. People are so confused. That they say we must baptize in the name of William Abraham. People are so confused. They're telling me I must go to Jeffersonville. People are so sold. They're looking for organization. Yes. Something to write their name on. Yes. Some association. Yes. Some affiliation. My question to them. When you give up this body. When you lie in your casket. Who will come for you? Who will be there? When you're crossing over. It's only one, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you don't know him today, Hallelujah. you are in trouble. Amen. Amen. You don't put no man before him. Right, you don't equal him to no man. Amen. Amen. That's, right. That's right. That's right. Our fellowship is pure and sincere. Yes. We are not here to win anybody's crown, but one crown that has been given to us. Yes. And yes. soon and very soon, that crown will just be ours. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the living God. Now, I've given you a quick little testimony. And there will be more testimonies, I pray. Because God has been doing wonderful things. Amen. You know, since we started this fellowship. Amen. You, know, you, have, you have the evidence. 
I don't have to tell you nothing but a priest is a living evidence because he believed. Amen. He believed. Amen. He came expecting. That's why we said, come expecting and go receiving. Amen. We're not playing game. It is true. Amen. You get out of the fellowship what you want to get out of it. That's right. Amen. Amen. When you get with, when you come into this fellowship and you have something in your mind you want to get out of it, you will get it. Amen. Amen. But again, I'm serious. I know God will do mighty things with you in this fellowship. We're just waiting. Amen. We're waiting. We're patient, but I know it will happen. I can see the Spirit. I mean, each and every one of us have a gift. Amen. This is a fellowship. It's not about Brother Paul. Bring your gift. Bring it on. I love gifts. Amen. I love gifts. You know, I love it. Because as a believer, you have to have everything. Amen. Do you remember what... what, what this echoes, is it because yes. it's here? Yes. Yes. Do you remember what, yeah, what Abraham gave Isaac? Remember that Abraham was have Ishmael, Ishmael. Amen. Jesus. Abraham was as Ishmael, right? And you realize, I mean, in terms of faith. I, you, you have to kind of try to understand, you know, where the Muslims are coming from. My wife and I were watching some, you know, certain things on, on YouTube that sometimes I go in to look at things. The main difference between Islam and Christianity. It will amaze you. They believe in all the prophets you believe in. From Noah to Moses, they believe in them. They believe in Jesus Christ. Right. But just one thing, they don't think he's the son of God. Amen. He's just a prophet, you see. Mm, yes. You see now, on that, we say no. Mm. We say no, because that's our identity. Yes. That's why I'm telling you, never you make a mistake mm. to take any man and equal him to Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't try that. That's right. Amen. No matter how great the man is, Amen. of course we love our prophet. Yes. We love William Branham. We love him. Because without him, we are lost. Yeah. God used him to give us the truth. But that's God that used him. That's you see? So I have to go back to the God that used him. Amen. That's Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ used him yes. to give us the truth. Yes. So I got to go to the source. Right. Why do you want to stop? It's in the sign. Get to the source. Amen. Amen? But when it comes to the gift, I'm telling you. See, the scripture said that Abraham gave Isaac everything. But unto Ishmael, he gave a little gift. Mm. That's what the Bible said. Oh, unto Ishmael, he gave some gift. But unto Isaac, he gave everything. Damn. That includes the gift. Everything. Because it's true inheritance. Yeah. Amen? So when we have truly inherited everything, the gifts are part of it. Amen. Yeah. We're not scared of the gift. If God gives you to speak in tongue, speak. But we pray for God to give us an interpreter so we know what you say. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Amen. If God give you to pray, pray. If God give you to share the word, share the word. Amen. We are here for that. Amen. It's not a proper Amen. No. Yeah. All God has done with me is to get something started. Amen. All of us are part of it. Amen. It's not about me. I cannot do this. Yes. There's no way I can do it. And I can tell you, we're just sowing the seed. Because soon, by His grace, some people are going to hear this fellowship. Some people call sometimes, but I put one of visit, just like but I pay to visit. You know, whoever wants to visit, receive. When you come, come expecting. Yeah. Amen. Let nothing in your body fail you. Amen. Don't look at your body to try to compare that to the promise that God has made. Amen. Don't try that. Amen. Because if you know the mighty God, Amen. if you know the mighty angel Amen. that's standing here Amen. to listen to everything you are saying, it will marvel you. Amen. It will shake you. Amen. And I'm going to give you a testimony as part of the message today that I heard. Somebody sent it to me. And that testimony literally, I mean, it was so glorious. It was so glorious. And I, I had my children even listen to it. You know, I, I don't know if I should play it or just tell you the story because of time. What time is it? Somebody have to keep time for me. One o'clock? Oh, so that means we have to. Let's be on our feet. Jesus. So this afternoon, our message is a very, very small message. Like I said, it's filled with the testimonies we've given, but 
<clears throat> we want something to keep us in line um, so that the journey that we're on is the one we can make. The title of the message this afternoon is They That Overcome. Amen. Amen? Amen. They That Overcome. Jesus. From that message, it's almost like a summary of the promise to the seven church ages. Jesus. Remember the last time we preached on the Patmos experience? Hallelujah. And we say we're going to get into the seven church ages. So what we're doing is we are taking the seven church ages apart. Because the prophet preached this for over like a week. And, you know, each one was like two and something hours. There's no way we can stand here for two and something hours and preach back every word the prophet has said. But what we try to do is to lay some emphasis on some nuggets that when you catch it, it makes you stronger. You can run the race with, with vigor and, and, and with some vitality. Because now it gives you courage to keep pressing on. Amen? Amen? That's what the word does for us. Amen? And the way I'm going to preach that message, I have scriptures that we are, you may think they are not in line, but we shall see how we can tie them up. Let's go to Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59, 19. See, we are talking church ages, but we are in the book of Isaiah. You say, but what? What does that got to do with it? Let's go as the Lord will lead us. Let's see. Isaiah 59, 19. I have, a, I have a couple of little, little scriptures. But, um, you know, you can make a note on some of them. Uh, 59, 19. Amen? Amen? Are you there? Amen. Yes. Amen. All right. So if you're there, we we'll just let's bow down our heads in prayer. Almighty God. Mm. Glory. Almighty God. Jesus. The great I am. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. You are here, Lord. Yes. Glory, Jesus. Because it's your promise. Let our heart rejoice because we find favor in thee. Thank you, Jesus. Let us be glad because our body is rolled away. Precious Lord, all the songs that are sung this morning and many more still to be sung. All the worship, yes. all the testimony, yes. it comes to thee, Lord. Jesus. Like a sweet smelling servant. Yes. All the effort, all the triumph, all the tribulation, thou art mindful. Yes. You that created the eyes, we do not see. Yes. You that created the ears, we do not hear. Thou hearest everything. Yes. Thou seest them all. Oh. My Lord, my God. Hallelujah. Blessed be thy holy name. Lord, we want to make every Sunday a memorial. Oh. We want every Sunday to be a day of recompense. The day that when that day does, Lord, we say, let us go into the house of God. David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the living God. Lord, when we come together in fellowship, Lord, Amen. it's a communion time, Lord. It's a time to commune with thee, Lord. It's a time to talk to you, Lord. And you will talk back to us, Lord, because your ear is wide open to hear us, Lord. My Lord, my God, I don't want to read this Bible like it's just a book. Let it be a word of meditation, a word of encouragement, a testimony of Jesus Christ. That is the spirit of prophecy. My Lord, my God, open this scripture, Lord, to give us life. You said the letter will kill us, but the spirit will give us life. We come to get life abundantly, Lord. My Lord, my God, take me away this afternoon and speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. I ask with thanksgiving in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 59, 19. He said, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west 
and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Yes. You can have your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. From the east yes. to the west, yes. thou shalt fear the name yes. of the Lord. Amen. And you know, Jesus. when the enemy will rise a standard, yes. he comes to their floor, but the Lord will rise a higher standard. That's right. No matter the flood of the enemy, yes. the Lord will rise a higher standard. Amen. Why? This scripture came to my heart. Because we are waiting for that standard. Yes. See, the enemy comes like a flood. Yes. Amen. But the name of the Lord is to be feared. Amen. It's not the name of no human being. Amen. But only the name of the Lord Amen. is to be feared. Amen. Because when the enemy will come yes. like a flood, the Lord will rise a standard. What is that standard? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are talking this afternoon. They that overcome. They that overcome. The overcomers. They are the standard. That the Lord will rise above the enemy. Only the overcomers. Are the standard. If you are not an overcomer. You are not the standard. In other words. God has weighed you. Into his measure. And he found you wanting. Like the book of the nation. He told him, you have been weighed in the scale and you're found wanting. Which is to say, you don't meet the standard. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But the Lord will rise a standard. Who is that standard? Throughout the seven church ages, yes. God has been rising some standard. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. He has been making a promise to every overcomer. To each overcomer, yes. there is a promise we shall get to them. Amen. From Revelation chapter 2 to 3, there is overcomers. There is a standard. Amen. There is a promise. Hallelujah. Glory. And the Lord is telling us here, the name of the Lord shall be feared. Amen. Everyone must fear his name. Yes, sir. Even dead that haven't confessed, they will fear his name. Yes, sir. If they don't fear his name now, they will fear his name in tribulation. Hallelujah. Yes. You don't fear his name now. They will fear him in tribulation. But we are fearing his name now. Amen. Now. Because we are the overcomers. It is the fear of the Lord in us. That's the beginning of wisdom. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The fear of the Lord in us. He gives us wisdom. Amen. To discern the right to the left. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The discernment spirit is the fear of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. And because we have the fear of the Lord. We can design the time. We can design the woman to live in. We can design the end time. Amen. Because we have the fear of the Lord. Amen. We know what we are supposed to do. Because we have the fear of the Amen. Lord. When we read the scripture, we can see our name. Hallelujah. Yes. In the book of Daniel. Yes. He said that Daniel, yes. he read the book. Yes. He understand the book. Yes. And he knew the time he was living in. Amen. By the revelation of the book. Because Jeremiah has written. That there will be in there in, in Babylon. For 70 years. And at the 70th year. There will be a year of redemption. Yes. And Daniel read the book. Amen. He understood the time. Amen. And the pride of Jesus. Yes. The pride of this hour. Yes. They read the book. Yes. They saw the book. Yes. They saw their name. Yes. Just like John. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When John got to heaven. Yes. No one was worthy. Amen. To open the book. No one was worthy to even look in. Amen. And John wept. Amen. John, the type of the bride. Yes. Like today. Why? Sometimes you are overburdened by all kinds of trial. Yes. And like John, you will say, he's not mindful of me. Yes. Because I don't know if he's for me. Why am I going through whatever the case may be? That was how John was thinking. When John got to heaven, John said, show me the book. Amen. You said there is a promise. Show me the book. And he was talking John. Here's the book. But the book is sealed. No one can look in. No one can open it. And John wept. John said, this is what I prayed for. This was my hope. Hallelujah. But John, John could not comprehend that. Because this is John the one. 
that was taken to the island of Patmos. He knew his life, how he believed. He was the only disciple that was standing because the rest of the disciples had been murdered and killed except him. Hallelujah. And he's wondering, this is the same God I believe. I am here. I'm looking at the book, but I cannot see it. I need to see Hallelujah. what's on this book. Yes. Yes, yes. What's the plan of redemption for me? Yes. What have I never for? Yes. What have you believed? Yes. You have the message of the hour in your hand. Yes. What is the evidence of it in your life? Yes. Is it all trials and tribulation? But the Lord is mindful. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I have the testimony to share with you, like I said. As somebody sent to me. This testimony, I will summarize it. He said he was somewhere in, uh, I believe, in Russia. What is the coldest place in Russia? They, they, Siberia. In Siberia. It was in Siberia, the testimony goes. This is a time that Soviet Union was taking over, and they were becoming, you know, implementing Marxism and communism. And communism doesn't go with Christianity, you know that? Right. So communism is against Christianity. That's why in China today, if they catch you with the Bible, yeah. you're dead. You can go to Google or go to uh, YouTube and check out the stories of what's happening to Christians in China. It will amaze you. Mm. One lady I was watching, how they tortured her, she did all kinds of evil you can think of. Smash her head into pieces, just telling her to denounce Christ. Mm. And she refused. Mm. They're killing families, they're burning them. Yeah. But this story, this testimony that was sent to me, by a good, uh, it's a family member actually. He probably wrote this letter and I, I thank him for the testimony because I told him it was wonderful. The testimony is not void from what we know, but that testimony adds more to what we know. Mm. And it seems like that testimony actually goes deeper than what some people think the testimony is. Amen? Mm. Because you know, because you're reading the book, which is the scripture, the message of the hour, when certain things happen, you can type it. You know, typing. You can type. Like, like, like the prophet said that Apostle Paul, he read the Old Testament and he typed the Old Testament to the New Testament. That's why he's the one that wrote the New Testament. More than 75% he wrote. Because the prophet said he was the one that typed. In other words, he can go to Old Testament and say, this is what it means. He can go to law and say, this is where law is fulfilled. We are not living in law. Grace is higher than law. And they said to him, what are you talking about? Say, I, he said, I'm not abolishing law, but I'm telling you, if you obtain grace, you're living above the law. Amen. 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 When you obtain grace, you're above the law. Amen. How? Because law is consumed in grace. Amen. You see, law is consumed in grace. Yes, so when you obtain grace, you have something higher than the law. Right. What does that mean? When you obtain grace now, you reference the name of Jesus Christ. When you reference his name, you cannot defile him. Amen. Because David said, where is the law of God written to David? Ooh. In my heart. Amen. David said, his laws are written in my heart, so I don't sin against him. Amen. You see now, when you obtain grace, the law is in your heart. Amen. It's no longer a book somewhere. Amen. It's no longer, don't do this, don't do that, do that. Do, no, it's in your heart. Amen. And you walk around like a child of God. Amen. And a child of God is a child of God. A child of God is a child of God. Amen. Amen. When you're a child of God, you're a child of God. Amen. It means God is your father. You know what that means? Yeah. God is your father. Amen. You have everything. Amen. Who is that bluffy devil? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So, in this testimony, this man was saying this. He said, there were seven pastors that were caught by then the Soviet Union and that Siberian time when they were just becoming Soviet Union and doing communists. When they caught them, they gave them ultimatum. All of you denounce the name of Jesus Christ and we set you free. Mm. And they said, no, 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 no. They whipped them, they did everything. They said, no, 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 no. They said, okay, we know what to do. We're going to strip you naked. They took out their clothes and they got them in this water that's frozen. And according to the testimony, he said that Siberia is the coldest place on earth. Mm. So they took them to a cold so when they say coldest place on earth, you can imagine how cold. Yes. But they stripped their clothes out, these seven pastors. And they told them all to get into the water. But the man that was sitting outside, it's like a captain of the army. So he has a vodka, you know, the, you know they drink vodka in, in Russia. Mm -hmm. And then he has a you know, couple of uh, clothes, warm clothes. 
So he told each and a cigar. So he told them, whenever you deny Jesus, come out. You take a cigar, drink your vodka, put on a jacket, you look mm. good. And you will not feel cold anymore. That's but the man was fully dressed with three or four, five, you know, jackets to stay warm and drinking his vodka and smoking his cigar mm. while he's sitting there watching the seven pastors in the water. So they got into the water. And after a few minutes, the body temperature begins to freeze. And because they're in frozen water, they begin to freeze from the bottom on top until when it gets here to the lungs and everything, then they die, they drop dead. So the man is sitting there watching them. And as they are there in the water, all of a sudden, seven angels came down from heaven. Hallelujah. And stood beside these seven pastors, each one with a crown in their hand. Seven angels came from heaven, Hallelujah. stand be beside the seven pastors, each one with a crown. But they didn't put the crown on their head yet. Ooh. They just stood next to them. And they waited. Whenever each one is about to drop dead, the crown goes on top. Oh, glory. So the crown comes there at the point of death. Hallelujah. Mm. As you're about to take your last breath, you still believe the crown is on. Ooh. The first one died. The next one, about to take the last breath, about dropping dead, the angel put the crown right on the head of the dying person as he's dying. And then, so they continue until the sixth. They all got it. When they came to the seventh, Ooh. the angel that was standing beside the seventh pastor kept going up to heaven and down. Ooh. Up and down. Like a yo-yo. Yeah. Up and down. Ooh. Up and down. So the, the captain was wondering, why is this one... Because I see the, the other ones, he gave them a crown. But this one is standing there and he's going up and down. So he didn't know what that means. So the story goes that the angel was going up and down as, as the man was changing his mind. Okay. So each time he wants to say, I want to denounce him and come out of this court, the angel goes up. Mm. Then he changes his mind, I believe, the angel comes down. So as he's not making up his mind, he's throwing the angel like a yo-yo. That's what you do in your moment of unbelief. The Ooh. angel is like a yo-yo. You don't believe, he goes. You believe, he comes back. You don't believe, back and forth, back and forth. Ooh. If you believe, he stays. He said, I'm here. That's why Jesus said, I am here. And forever will be here. But it's only for those that believe. Yes. Amen. He said, I will never forsake you. But that's not when you don't believe. Amen. You see, that's the, that's the catch. I will never forsake you or leave you, but you have to believe. If you don't believe, he's not there. So as the, as the angel is going back and forth, this man was going, make, not making up his mind. Then all of a sudden, because those pastors didn't see the angel. The only person that saw the angel was the captain. Just like the angels are here, but you can't see them. They're here. They're here. They are here, that you can see it. It's here. Yes. It's here. Yes. Amen. Why would he not be here? If he's not here, then his word is a lie. Yes. Amen. He keeps his word. Amen. He said, "We two or three are gathered together Amen. in his name. Amen. I come in his name. You come. He's here." Wow. That angel was going up and down because the man couldn't make up his mind. And the story goes, after a while, that pastor ran out of the water. Say, okay, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe, I don't believe. He ran out of the water. He doesn't believe anymore. He took the jacket. He took the whiskey. He took the cigar. He sat down. Then the captain said, what's wrong with this man? Ooh. Then the captain took off his own clothes. <laughs> he ran into the water himself. <laughs> and stood there. And died in the water. And got the crown. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. This was a testimony. It's on my phone. I can play it for you when you want. Mm. And you know something, friends? That testimony is a type of the church age we're living in. Mm. The first church age, I received their crown. They are not here. The second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, they are gone. Mm. The seventh is here. Jesus. Mm. The seventh church age is here. And why are we still here? We can't make up our mind. Leave a man 
The next day you believe Jesus Christ. The next day you want to worship a man. You don't know what to believe. And so we are still here. Didn't the prophet say, when the bride gets to know who she is, yeah, when the bride, that's when. Yes. We're waiting for that when. <laughs> and as long as that when is not now, the angel is going like a yo-yo. Because when the bride gets to know who she is, the final bride has come in, then we are gone. We got a crown. But they that overcome, remember that is the topic today, they that overcome. Yes, they that overcome. Amen, sir. You see how it's tying together? They that overcome. We will write a standard above every flood of the enemy. Hallelujah. They that overcome Amen. will not deny him till the end. Amen. But you will stay till the end to overcome. Amen. Overcome means till the end. Amen. Just like that testimony. The six stayed till the end. The seven did not stay. He never got a crown. Amen. The crown is given at the end. Amen. Not at the beginning. Amen. Not in the middle. At the end. Amen. At your last breath. Amen. Then the crown is given. Amen. That's why when you're running the race, you don't look back. Amen. Amen. Jesus preached the gospel. He said, remember Lot's wife. Yes. That was one of the gospels Jesus preached. Because Lot's wife had every chance to escape. But she looked back. Mm. Amen. Therefore, this bright age, this ego age, Amen. you have to be able to overcome. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us see. There are promises here. In the seven church ages, we're not going to go deep into everything, but the prophet actually gave us what I call the church age message cycle. Amen? I call that the church age message cycle. In other words, in the seven church ages, there is a cycle. There's something that repeats. That's a cycle. It repeats. And it's a pattern in the seven church ages. Amen? See, by his grace, God is calling the fivefold ministry to take the word and break it down Amen. where that everybody can understand it. Amen. It's not to recite it like a book or like a tape recorder. It is to do it in such a way that my mother can understand. Hallelujah. And you can understand and I can understand. So once you can get something out of it, you go and add more. Faith is given by measure. But if you don't have anything to add, nothing will be given to you. Amen. So if I stand here and run my mouth like a parrot, you get nothing. True. So the prophet preached seven church ages, not just like a book, but the seven church ages have a cycle. What is it? In every church age, that's a messenger. So when we get to that, you begin to identify them. Every church age has a messenger. Amen? Amen. And every church age has a praise from Christ. Amen? In the seven church age messages, each one has a messenger, each one has a praise. In other words, a, a word of exaltation from Christ. Every church age has it. Amen? And now, each one has also a complaint from God. So each has a messenger, each one has a praise, each one has a complaint. Something I don't like. Something God says, I don't like this. Amen? And that's across the church ages. And also, each one has a warning. A warning. So he gives you a messenger. He gives you an exhortation. He gives you a warning. Amen? And he gives you a complaint. Amen? And then, each one has the voice of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Each one, each church message, the, the messenger will say, Listen to the voice of the Spirit. Amen. There is a voice of the Amen. Spirit. Amen. Amen. And then each one also has what I call here also, which is what from the prophet as well. If you take the chapter book, that's how the prophet broke it down. But he broke this down using each church age. But you have to see that pattern so that when you when you listen to the church age message or read it, you begin to analyze it. It will begin to make sense to you. Amen. Because the reason you're doing that is not to acquire knowledge. It's rather to grow in spirit. Amen. Not knowledge. That's the right. spirit. Knowledge is not for God. God lives in spirit. Amen. Yes, God doesn't want your knowledge. Yes. What, what are you going to teach God? 
it is your spirit. This is to bring your spirit to where your soul will be subjected to your body. You, you, you acquire the word so you can grow in spirit and put your body under subjection and then your soul has a direct contact with God. Amen. And now you can speak things into existence. Amen. And now when you pray, your prayer is effective. Amen. Each one has a reward. Amen? Amen. And the reward is what we started talking about today. Thank you. Because the word, the reward is for they that overcome. overcome. Amen. The reward is only for the overcomers. Amen? Amen? So, as an example, let's take it. Let's go to Revelation 2 7. You will see the first day that overcome. We're going to pick each day that overcome in all the seven church ages. It's a big verse. What time is it now? 126. So, let's say we have 10 more minutes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, are you happy? Amen. Revelation 2-7. The first overcomers. That's the Ephesians church age. They that overcome. The scripture says there, 2 7, it says, And he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, you see, the Spirit saith unto the church, because the church has a spirit. Now it says, To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life. Which is in the middle, which is the midst, 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 middle, in the middle of the paradise of God. Amen. 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 So that's a promise first to the overcomers for that church age. And later we can go deep into what this means, each one. But you already, you already know, we spoke about this even last Sunday. We talked about it that the tree of life is Jesus Christ. That's what he's talking about. They eat of the tree of life. Once you eat the tree of life, you will never die. Yes, amen. That's why that God chased Adam and Eve out of the garden when they sin. Because they eat the tree of life, they will remain in sin and not die. God said no. Because they eat the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yes. They must die. Yes. And what is supposed to die is not the flesh. It's the soul that sinned that must die. We read it last Sunday. That's right, sir. We read it last Sunday. Yes. The soul that sinned must die. Amen. So it is the death of the soul that we are really talking about. Not the flesh. Amen. Because the moment God took the earth to make this flesh, God knew this flesh is going back to this earth. Amen. Amen? Because this flesh is not designed to be eternal. It because it has a beginning. Yes. It cannot have a beginning and be eternal. But there is something that came from God. That is the soul. Yes. Amen? The soul is a part of God. Amen. Amen? And that's why when we die, the spirit returns back, but the soul is there to worship in his presence. But the body goes back to the grave. And we'll never be seen again. Amen. That flesh will never be seen again. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. That's a different body God is making for us. Wonderful. Like my son was sharing the word on Friday. I, met, I let my kids do prayer meetings, share some word. Mm. So uh, young Paul was talking about, you know, that Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Right. And then he said, people may think, is, did he lie? Because he hasn't come yet. Mm. Because he says, soon I'm coming. But what is soon? Mm. Soon can mean... 400,000 years. We don't know. We just keep waiting. Amen? Amen. That's why we're not chasing around looking for, oh, it must be today, it must be tomorrow. Just live your life. Just believe the word. Yes, sir. Just keep marching on. Amen? Amen. Yeah. That's all. Don't bother yourself. Don't sit around the computer and try to find out, oh, it must be tomorrow. No, no, no. Don't, 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 get, don't get into that. You have so much to do in your life. Amen. If you got nothing to do, just sing. Glory. Just glorify his name and move on. Amen. 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 Just don't bother yourself. Amen. Amen. Don't get into argument. Don't, don't do that. Amen. You have no time for that. Let every moment you spend on earth be accounted for. Wow. Don't stay around naysayers. Mm. Don't stay around gossipers. Don't do that. Amen. Don't get on the phone to gossip over nothing. Don't even challenge people on doctrine. Don't get there. True, somebody wants to challenge you on doctrine, leave them alone. Amen. If somebody comes to you and says, tell me, teach me, then you go, go ahead. But if they come, they, you wouldn't, they want to challenge you. And argue, I will teach you what Jesus said. Hallelujah. Yes. Do what Jesus did. Yes. When they came to Jesus, they said, Okay, tell us, where did you get the power to do these things? And Jesus designed their spirit. Mm. They came to tempt him. Then they said, Okay, where did John the Baptist get the power to do what he did? They said, I won't tell you either. He walked away. You see? 
<laughs> because Jesus knew they, they, they don't want to learn. They, they just want to argue. Yes. Everything you say will be taken to argument. Yes. Uh -huh. You don't have time for that. Yes. You just leave him alone. Yeah. If somebody calls you and says, Oh, brother, you went to some church today. So how was it? You share the word. Amen. But if they come and say, Why did you go to that church? Really? Bye. You don't have to argue. No. Amen. You have no time for that. Amen. Spend your time on things you turn Amen. Because time is filled with sweet temptation, and we know that sooner or later we go home. Amen. Amen. You don't have time for argument. You don't have time. There is a promise for the rewarders. That's another, there's a reward coming to the overcomers here. We just read one for two seven. Now let's continue. We have one for two eleven. Revelation two eleven. There's another overcomers. Two eleven. It says there. Just when you get that revelation, hold your hand there because we have a couple of scriptures on revelation about the overcomers. We are hitting just the overcomers today. Amen. On 2.11, on 2.11 it says there, He that have an ear again, let him hear what the Spirit has said unto the church. He that overcome shall not be hurt of the second death. Amen? Amen? Amen. You hear that? Second death. This is, this is the second church age. This is Smyrna. This is the promise. But remember, this promise carries over. It carries because the tree of life that Jesus Christ I need to eat it too. Amen? Amen. So it's not just for Ephesus. Amen. We have to eat the same tree of life. Amen. Amen? But we are the final church age, so guess what we get? Everything. We get everything. Amen. We are the final church age, we get everything. Yes, sir. Why do we get everything? Because we bring rapture down. We are the rapturing spirit. We are, we are the one to cause rapture. Hallelujah. It's not the first church age, they are gone. Right. They can't do anything, um, they are gone. The second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, they're gone. It's the seventh. Mm. The rapturing age we're living in. Mm. So you are now with cost rapture. Amen. You see now? You see how important you are? Amen. That's why the prophet said there's no time that's more precious than this time no. wow. mm -hmm. that we're living in. Mm. So when you want to think about what you are, yes. you think about the fact that you're going to cause rapture. Your faith mm. will bring down rapture. Amen. So you think you're just nobody just walking around and filled with trouble. No. Your faith, not the faith of Paul. Paul is gone. Paul is gone. Peter is gone. James is gone. Philip is gone. Stephen is gone. They are gone. William Graham is gone. He's gone. We are here. But we are holding on to the word. To manifest the word. To cast rapture. Amen. It is the living that will cause rapture. Wonderful. Because the scripture said, they that are living will not prevent those that are dead. Amen. We will not prevent them. We are here. Amen. If I'm here, that's beautiful. Amen. If I'm not, I join them. And you continue. Amen. But remember, the living, we are alive today. Amen. And every time we wake up, we say, Lord, let it be today. Wow. That's what the bride said. Praise Even Lord. so, Amen. come quickly, my Lord. Yes, wow. sir. But this is how special we are. Wonderful. Amen. So here, this modern church age, I made a promise. They that overcome, they will not test of what death? Second death. What is the second death? Mm. Death of the soul. The second death is the death of the soul. That's not the first death. Mm. Because remember, they that are part of the first resurrection will not test of the second death. In the book of Revelation, it's written there. Blessed are they that are part of the first resurrection. Unto those, there's no second death. Right. Why? Because the first resurrection is for rapture. If you're not going to be part of rapture, you're not going to wake up. You're going to let you sleep there. Take your nap. While we go to make some celebration up. We'll have some good time. Keep sleeping. Then when we come back with the king now, then all the living will be waked up. The book of life will be open. In the book of life, we see how you did. But where will I be? I'll be sitting with the king. We're going to sit with the king, Amen. looking at them. Amen. You see now? Oh, so, the second death is what is being said here. Dead and overcome in the smaller church age. Now, the next promise is 217. 2.17 is another promise. They say, he that have an ear now, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. To him that overcome will I give to eat of the hidden manna. And will give him a white stone, and in that stone a new name written, which no man knoweth save he 
that receive it. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Now, part of why our faith will cost rapture is because this is the age where the prophet of our day came and he preached Godhead as a topic of abstract as that may sound. He has every boldness to stand there and declare what was already written in First Timothy 3 16. Yes. It's already there. Yes. With no controversy. Amen. Paul was able to just dump it there. Amen. But Peter was saying that we don't understand what Paul is saying. My Lord. Their mind couldn't comprehend it. Mm. And Paul said, with no controversy, right. great is the mystery of godliness. Because Christ was master in flesh. Amen. And Christ was put to the angels. And Christ was seen by the Gentiles. I went back up in heaven. No controversy. And when William Abraham came, because he's the seventh angel messenger, mm. and the Spirit of the Lord was upon him, mm. and he can now declare that Jesus Christ is Amen. God. And he can now go to Revelation chapter 1, mm. and he can declare where Jesus introduced himself. My Lord. He said, I am the Alpha. Yes. I am the Omega. Amen. And when John turned to see, he see only him. That's right. John did not see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. John just saw him standing there. Hallelujah! Amen. He was walking in the midst of the seven candlesticks, but it was only him. Wonderful. Only him. Amen. That's not three of them. So now we can say with all boldness, because if Jesus is not known, he will not come down. If Jesus is still being confused, he will not come down. Amen. But since we know him now, Amen. Since we preach him now, Amen. he has to come down now. Amen. That's the end time now. Hallelujah. Amen. He has to take our prophet to bring him down. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To declare the counsel of God. Amen. That there's none but Jesus Christ. Amen. On the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Amen. And Jesus Christ is the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He's the Amen. Alpha and the Omega. Yes, he is. Amen. Your powerful God. Amen. There's none but him. That's right. He has to take the prophet of God to come and declare him. Amen. You see now, that's why we're living at the end time. There's nothing left. Yes. Revelation 10, 7 is done. Amen. Christ has been revealed. Amen. The mystery of God is finished. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, sir. On one side of the prophet message is to come back to bring the faith of the fathers to the children. Yes. Just to bring back. But on the other side is to fulfill the mystery of God in there that God is done. Amen. The mystery of God is finished. Amen. So when your faith is brought back to the fathers of faith, now you caught a revelation Amen. that's more than ever yes. that was hidden yes. or just waiting for this time to be revealed. Yes. And God knew this was the time Amen. because he has his mind. Amen. That's why we're happy. Thank you, Father. Amen? So, Amen. We take what's given to us. Yes. But here, the scripture is clear. Amen. The second death shall not be tested by those. Amen. That's the death of the soul. That was in the book of Genesis. Mm. The day you eat of this, you shall die. Mm. That's the soul God was talking about. Mm. Because after they ate it, they were still walking around. Mm. But God knew their soul is in trouble. Amen. That's why when Jesus died, he went to hell. Right. He preached to the souls right. that were in prison. Exactly. He set the captives free. Hallelujah! Yes. He declared the captives free. Yes. He opened the gates of hell. Amen. He set his children free. He said, I have done nothing to stay here. Yes. They were just waiting for me. Yes. They knew there was coming a day that I'm coming down. Amen. Jesus. That's the first thing he has to go do. Go set them free. free. You open the gates. And then the other devil said, who are you? He said, I am the Lord God of my Hallelujah. He said, open the gates. Hallelujah. He said, introduce yourself. He said, I don't need no introduction. I, am, I have the key. Yeah. That's what he told John. He said, I have the key of death. And I have the key of life. Right. Yeah. I have the key of hell. Oh. I have the, every key. He has yes, the key. Yeah. Amen. So he can lock whoever he wants now. Amen. <laughs> That's why now the qualification for hell is not to believe in Jesus Christ. He locks you there because don't believe in him. Yes. Not devil. Him. 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 He has the key. Mm. If you open that key and say everybody get out, they get out. But he has a condition when you are alive. He gave you a choice. Give you a choice. Free Morabian, free agent, do whatever you want. He said, When I'm standing here, I'm the tree of life. Can you see me? It's your choice. But you can overcome. 
Sometimes we get him, we, we, we have him for a moment and then we lose him again. Mm. That's the problem. That's one thing we, we want to make sure in this fellowship we don't do. You can't get him and lose him. You have to get him and keep him. Amen. Hold on. Amen. Hold on, my people. Amen. It doesn't matter what befalls you. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. The wife, the children, the son, yes. the job, and you name it. Go on and on and on. It's just for a season. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise his name. Let's continue. Next message, 216. It's another promise. Revelation 216, we can get to all of them quick. I, I gotta, 216, uh, two, 226, 226, I'm sorry, 226. 226. It says, He that overcometh and keepeth thy words unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Amen? That's the next church age. The next one is 35. Another promise, Revelation 35. He that overcometh, he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in a white raiment, And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Amen. 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 The next one, 312. Next promise, 312. Him that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall go no more out. I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Amen. And the final promise is 321. 321. That's the Laodicean promise. 321. To him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me. Yes. In my throne. Yes. Even as I also overcame. And I have I'm sitting down in my father. In my father in his throne. I'm sitting with my father in his throne. Amen. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. But you know, these promises sometimes they seem so ordinary. And so, come on. Hallelujah. Yes. And so is the life of a Christian. Yes. But why do you think that is the case? Why is that the case? Because the word of God is so simple that if the wise and prudent want nothing to do with it. You know, you talk about these things, you preach it, and you meditate upon it, and it's like sometimes in a deaf ear. Isaiah 53. It's a very famous scripture that I'm sure some of you know by heart. Yes. Isaiah 53. We're going to read 1 to 7. You see, who have believed our report? Unto whom is the hand of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form, no comeliness. When you shall see him, there's no beauty. That we should even desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow. Acquainted with grief. He hid him as he were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs. Carried our sorrow. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we were healed. And all oh, we like sheep, we have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had led on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her sir. He's dumb, so he opened not his, his mouth. mouth. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. Amen. 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 That's how common he is. Yes. He's not important. If you see him, he's a, all these things they're talking about. But one day when you close your eyes, you will see. Amen. But while our eyes is open, let's keep meditating upon the word. Let's keep eating it here and there, here a little, there a little. 
here little, there little, here little, as I say, here little, there little, here little, there little. Amen. But eventually, you know, you will David it word for word, here little. Hallelujah. You know, eat too much sometimes, it will choke, but, but you know, eat as much as you can absorb. You know, who shall I even begin to tell about the wisdom of God? Who shall I even begin to meditate this thing upon? Hey. Is it one that's still drinking milk? Mm. Or wheat from milk? Mm. Or eating meat? Amen? That's why I tell you, we're not chickens. Amen? When you know it's a time of fellowship, when Sunday comes, brothers and sisters, let it be in your heart, you know, let me, let me go to fellowship. Amen. You know, let me go because I have something to share there. If the Lord put a word in your heart, even just to meditate on a word for five seconds, so, do it. Amen? amen. We open. Amen. You don't have to preach it. You can share it. If there's a verse the Lord put in your heart, you say, no, this is burning in my heart all week. Mm. Share it. Amen. Amen. Because, you know, the ways of God is not the ways of man. Mm. You, see, you see what we just read? He said, you have just as much stress to get you out of the way. Mm. But you must overcome. Like that testimony you have. Yeah. The six pastors have received their crown. When the seventh one made the angel became a yo-yo. Do we want to make the word of God a yo-yo? Or do we want to stand still and see the salvation of the living God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do I have overcome? Amen. Amen. The message prophet preach. In the message, how can I overcome? Hallelujah. He preached that message, 1963. In that message, he said, actually, he read Revelation 3.21. Which is the, the promise to the Laodicean church age. That's what the prophet used to preach that message. I believe it was October. October 1963. The message was how can I overcome? In that message, he has some quotes there. I just made some, some notes. He said, Christ is put outside the church, which you know. It's on this church age. That Christ is outside the church. He's no longer welcome. He's outside knocking. We can get to that in the, in the message of Laodicea. Amen. And he also said, if we Nobody else. Nobody else. Christ. That's the message of the hour. Mm -hmm. The message of the hour is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay. That's what it is. Yes. Declaring Jesus Christ that we're living at the end time, that He's coming again. Yes. That's the message of the hour. Yes. Revealing that Jesus Christ is God. Revealing the seven seals. Yes. That's the message of the hour. Yes. Opening the book that was closed. What was it? Showing us who those horse riders were. They were hidden from the eyes of the prudent and the wise. When you touch Revelation chapter 6, the seals, what was it? From the white horse rider to the black horse rider to the red to the pale. It took the messenger of my day, but that was to declare Jesus Christ. Because as you're reading these church ages, we talked about it before, there is a spirit that devil was using to fight these church ages. Jesus. And that was what we're trying to overcome. Today, you're trying to overcome the Laodicea church age. Amen. What is Laodicea? The female spirit. The spirit of the woman, that's what the prophet called it. That's the meaning of Laodicea. Everything is good. You have the choice for everything. Everything is choice. Jesus. If you want to marry a dog, that's your business. You don't have to worry about what the Bible says. You're free. That's not an issue. Free enough to do whatever you want to do. But they that overcome, we have a promise, hallelujah. And we will stand still and get that promise. It doesn't matter what devil tries to do. We're not religious. We just know our God. Amen? Yeah. We're not here to put our name in some religion. Mm -hmm. Religion is just a covering. Mm -hmm. yes. We are here to declare your stand in Christ Jesus. That's what the prophet said here. If you want to live according to the message of the hour, live according to the life of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's it. There's nothing else. And he continued there. And he gave examples of the overcomers. Noah, Daniel, you know them. He said, God by his predestination has brought the seed to life. And, and the seed, the prophet said, is expressing itself now. You say, you see? What is expressing himself in us? Jesus Christ. That's the seed that was sown in us. Jesus. Because if Jesus is not in me, he will know me. Amen. The seed that's in me is Jesus Christ. Amen. And at the new time, he begins to germinate. 
The prophet said it's not before the light. It is when the light strikes it. What is that light? The Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost strikes your life, that's a light. It awakes you up. You say, oh, I shouldn't be doing that. Amen. Because now you're in the light. You walk in the light. Amen. Such a beautiful light. And who is the light? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He said, and the Word was the light of the world, and darkness could not comprehend it. Hallelujah. Who was that light? Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the light of the world. Hallelujah. When that light strikes you, it changes everything about you. Amen. Hallelujah. And prophet said, you see, just like the lily, it expresses beauty when it's up from the earth. You see, and see, the sun just strikes it. And you see, he said, when you see the light, you begin to blossom. Hallelujah. On line 122 of the same message, he said, Jesus Christ showed us how to overcome. How? He said, by the word. Amen. Amen. The only way you can overcome is by the word. Amen. Not by what anybody else said. Jesus. Not by some association. Yes. By the word. By the word. Amen. Yes. And the prophet said here, yeah, he's trying to give us something to think about. So I'll leave you with that thought as we go into singing in a second. You can be on your feet as we read this one. The prophet said this. If you live 100 years, yes. what are you going to come to? The prophet said, mental your mind will be gone and you'll be crippled up with old age and you'll be shaking. That's where you were going. Amen? Our goal is not how long we live. It is how valuable the life we live is for Christ. The prophet said here, if your goal is just to live to be 100 years, when you get to that 100 years, you'll be shaking. You'll be crippled up. Is that your goal? That's not my goal. My goal is to have a valuable life for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. That's why when death came for the disciples, which is to give away this body, they didn't think twice. Because they caught the revelation of the real life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And finally, prophet said, Paul preached this word. He said, Paul preached the word. He wrote the word. The same word that we are trying to follow because he typed it, perfected it. The New Testament, he perfected the Old Testament. We said before. And remember, at the beyond the curtain of time, when the prophet said, I preach what Paul preached, and the bride of Jesus Christ, we are resting on that. We don't have two messages, we have one message. Amen. We don't have two Bible, we have one Bible. Yes. The message is Bible explained, the message is Bible exposed, the message is the revelation of the Bible. Amen. It's not a new book. When you get it that way, you will not be confused. So when somebody is flipping, I got the message. What is the message? It is the revelation of the Bible. Because the Bible is one. Amen? It takes the mouth of the prophet, because the word of God comes to the prophet, to tell us, these are the hidden nuggets in the Bible. They are there. It's revealed in the scripture. Such a scripture, Jesus said. And you will see that every line talks about him. From Genesis to Revelation. Amen. Blessed be the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you love the Lord? Amen. Let's give him a hand. I love to sing. Uh, we have series of songs, so the musicians will help us. God bless you, Brother Gideon. It's getting good. Amen. You can see. Amen. Doing a good support to Brother Chris, you know. That little drum there is good. So we have several, several songs, so we're just going to run all of them without stopping. We do the best we can. The first one is 61. All right? So if you can find it when I'm going, you go along. If you can, just clap your hand. I have about uh, six or seven or eight songs here that I want to run through. Amen? We're going to make some noise. I shall not be moved. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <clears throat>
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Let's go into prayer. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Anything you need at this time, you put it to God in prayer. Oh, you put it to Him in prayer now. Hallelujah. Let's blossom into prayer. Let's talk to our master. He will talk back to us. Oh, let's talk to him. Everyone, you can talk to him. Whatever you need now, the door is open. The door is open. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to hear you. Talk to him now. Call him now. He's our lover. He's our lover. He's our healer. He's our giver. He's our friend. He's everything. My Lord, my God. My Lord, my God. As we dedicate this place of fellowship unto you, I come to you in prayer. As something Solomon said, when Solomon dedicated the temple, and he said unto you, My Lord, my God, if anyone will step in here with their cry, with their hope, or with their word of prayer, please hear their voice. If anyone will call you, my Lord, my God, in sincerity, in spirit, and in truth, I'm fair and blood. My brothers, Lord, they drive all the way from New York. They pay all kinds of toll, all kinds of gas. Brother Chris Van Ham, oh, the dedication, the dedication every Sunday. Oh, driving from Brooklyn to pick up my brother, to come here. For what? What is he coming for? For communion, for fellowship. My Lord, what do we have? What do we have? When they look at us, like we read in Isaiah 53, you are no communist. When they look at you, they don't want to talk to you. You are nothing for them to look at. But you are wounded for our transgression. You are a bruise for our iniquity. The transgression of my peace was upon you. By your stripes you were healed. Lord, I come to you in prayer this afternoon. In my cry, in my heart, oh, fill of cry, just to thank you for what you have done for this life so far. It has been wonderful. What you have done has been magnificent. The spirit. That we got this morning to stay with us yes. throughout our day, throughout our life. Lord Father, it is time now that we get to go home to reach our, our, our thing that we used to do. But that there is no biggest day that be in your presence, Lord. Lord Father, that is just the beginning. Oh, in this city, let this city be joyful. Oh, I remember. Hallelujah! Yeah, hallelujah. hallelujah. With, the, with the prophet. Yes, yes. So when you come, when you say your words, Amen. your judgment is coming. Amen. I don't know what we yes. have for that city, Amen. but honey, there is something great Amen. Right there. Hallelujah. And that, oh, that hallelujah. Holy, the Holy Spirit Amen. will turn the, that city, yes, Lord. and yes, Lord. the devil, I know, is going to act. Amen. Yes, but with this action, Amen. be under our control. Yes, yes, Lord. Father, yes. we're going to go home. Yes, we thank you, Lord. Thank you. Take, take care of us. Take yes, care of everything. Yes. We pray you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen